Hello, dear friend. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Today's video is what I hope to be the beginning of a chill weekly series where I journal, plan and check in with you about my goals, where my mind's been lately, my progress on various creative projects and anything that I want to share really. But first things first, I recently got a lot of new subscribers which I'm so baffled by and happy about so if you're new, welcome, thank you so much for being here. My name is Sarah and I'm an aspiring author of speculative fiction. If you're not new here, then welcome to my journal, which I haven't given you a close look at before. It's a Hovenichi Wix with a 2023 Tomitaro Makino cover. I like to write in it with a black pen. For those of you interested, this is the Signal Uniball 0.5. You probably know me as a digital planner, which I am, but recently I realized just how much an analog system helps in keeping myself accountable, because when I kept everything digital, I could always change the deadline of a certain project and there would be no evidence that I'd derailed from my original plans, whereas when I keep my plans on paper, I can always see what I did and what I didn't do, and I have a better understanding of how I've been spending my time, what happened in each week, and how I can improve. Also, I have to say, crossing that to-do list feels so much more satisfying on paper, I guess because it's permanent. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy this type of content. It's definitely not something regular viewers are used to, but I'm hoping this series will motivate you to keep working on your goals step by step and also to set realistic expectations for yourself. I'm also hoping it will help me keep myself accountable and embrace vulnerability because recently I've been too focused on the outcomes which I have no control over and the fear of failure has been quite paralyzing. So, I want to do this to show myself that one failure in the process is not a big deal. It's often surrounded by little wins and I often learn something from it. Besides, slow progress is still progress, so I hope we all keep taking steps forward together. For those of you who are just here for company or body doubling purposes, feel free to mute me if you want. But otherwise, welcome to the start of a journey. I say start because in this video I'm planning what I consider to be the first week of the rest of the year for me. Why does it feel that way? Well, I just completed a big time and energy consuming project, which has taken me most of the year to finish and I'm now finally free to spend my personal time working on the things I love aka writing, reading and documenting the process. It would have been nice to have started the rest of the year on October 1st, so I'd have a full quarter ahead of me, but that didn't work out, which is fine. I'm here now, and I'm super excited to make the most out of the season ahead. That being said, of course I can't talk about the rest of the year without mentioning Preptober and Inorimo. So, happy Preptober for those of you who use this month to prepare for the challenge of writing a novel in a month. Are you participating this year? Let me know. I'll be sharing the details of my plans for Preptober and Inorimo in my next video, so definitely look out for that if you're interested. I just started thinking about it and I'm not sure if I'll be working on last year's project or another older one. But that's not for today's discussion. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about this phase of entering a new stage full of opportunities, as well as about my intentions for the rest of the year as a whole. The week I'm setting up is going to be the entrance into this new version of my days. The end of the year is always my most creative time, perhaps because of fall and Halloween and Christmas, all of which I feel intensely with all of my heart, or it could be because of the school year, which I spent most of my life experiencing. So I set up some habits that will hopefully bring out that creative side of me. 
as an aspiring author, of course writing and reading come first. I'm not trying to write a lot or read a lot, but I'm trying to keep doing those things consistently. If I focus on consistency, the pages will pile up eventually, right? So I just want to know that I did it, that I showed up for myself and will keep doing so. Another important habit I track is YouTube, which includes scripting, filming and editing. I don't know what's wrong with me because I've been running this channel for almost two years now, but I still don't have a regular upload schedule. I don't want to beat myself up about it, but I do think it's a big failure on my part because it doesn't reflect how much I care about this channel and this community and I definitely want to change that. I want to start posting regularly so all of you know when to expect a video from me. For example, this series, I'm thinking of posting a new episode every Monday. I think it makes sense because it's the beginning of the week for a lot of people, but also because it's not a very active day on YouTube and since journaling is not the main focus of my channel, even though recently I've been really invested in it, I can save the busiest days for writing and reading related content. That's just my current thought process, let me know what you think. When planning for the week ahead, I like to decorate the spread based on what I want that week to feel like. Or sometimes I just stick in images that I feel will motivate me or give me strength to get through some challenges that I think I'll go through that week. All of the so-called stickers I use are printed at home and cut by me. I like to do it that way because it's more personal and it becomes a way of memory keeping as well especially when I use photos I took myself or images that represent things I've been in contact with recently. The pictures I use that are not my own are always from Pinterest or Tumblr or sometimes I just search for them on Google if it's something really specific like a book cover or something. The point is, they're all handpicked by me. I do intend on buying some stickers in the future, but I just haven't found that many that I really really love, so yeah, I haven't yet. A big theme that I want to incorporate into this season is slow and creative living, so I'm trying to choose images that reflect that and bring me comfort. I want to focus on monotasking and I want to both create a lot and consume a lot, especially fiction books and TV shows. I kind of want to feel like I'm wrapping myself in a blanket of fiction without having to worry that I should go back to the real world anytime soon. I want to make sure that I allow myself to rest and that I make time to fill the well instead of just producing, 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 which in my opinion kills the joy of the creating process. And that's probably part of what led to my recent creative identity crisis. So yeah, a balance of the two, creating and consuming, always works best for me. So what are my expectations for next week? This is a plan with me video, so I think I should talk about that. Well, I want to film and edit quite a lot of videos, six to be exact. Not because I want to overwhelm myself with things to do, far from it. But because right now I have a total of four videos that I'm in the middle of editing and I want to try to finish them all. It's my fault because I keep starting filming new videos before I've finished editing the ones in my hard drive because my editing style is quite complex and the process just takes so so long and sometimes I just want to actually do the things I show you myself doing in those videos and that means filming. Doing means filming. So yeah, that's the current situation and because I don't want to spend the whole week editing, I'd also like to film two more videos. So six videos. The first week of anything is always experimental, so I can't tell from it how many videos I'll be able to comfortably post per week. But one of my biggest ambitions right now is definitely to be able to post regularly on this channel, 
So now that I'm freer, I want to know exactly how much I'm capable of doing and I want to use this initial enthusiasm to test that. Ideally, a few weeks into this experiment, I'll achieve three things. One, I'll figure out exactly how many videos I'm comfortable with posting per week without taking time from other goals. Two, I'll manage to work on a video at a time so I don't have projects accumulating on top of each other, like what's been happening all year this year. And three, I'll be able to live creatively as much as I can without giving up rest. The living creatively as much as I can part is actually another way that I'm turning this week into a new beginning, because I just ordered The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. If you don't know, The Artist's Way is a creative guidebook that includes a 12-week challenge with the main objective of helping artists recover their creativity. I've owned it in digital format for many years and I've read it many times now, but I never did the challenge because it never felt like the right time. And yes, I do know that the right time doesn't exist, but oh well. I think right now is a good time for me to dive into it, so I'm hoping to start this week and share the experience with you as well. The way I see it, this challenge is going to shape the rest of the year for me, because the main goal is to heal my creativity, so I'm not going to put pressure on myself to work on things I don't want to work on. I'm simply going to be looking for and exploring the things that make me excited to write, to create, to live, so that I can recover from the whole of 2023 until now. What I mean by this is that this year I kept stomping on my self-trust over and over again, because I kept breaking the promises I made to myself in order to say yes to other things, like that big project which is finally over. I'm sorry I'm being vague, but I don't like to talk about things that involve other people online. Even if I'm comfortable sharing them, they might not be, and I never want to take that freedom away from anyone. So yeah, I won't be mentioning the project again, I think. I want it out of my mind for a while either way. But saying yes to everyone but myself is definitely a problem that's been affecting me basically my whole life, and even more so in these past recent years, and... <sighs> I'm honestly so done with it. So, imagine, this was me ever since I came back to Portugal. I scheduled for the week ahead. According to my schedule, I had time to write, to do my job, and to film and edit a video. Great. Then, someone, usually a family member, but not always, would come and ask, Are you free on X day? And that was a day I had scheduled for video filming or editing. So I would reluctantly say, I guess not. Why would I say this? Well, for many reasons. First, I've been away from my family and home country for so many years, and during that time there were things I was responsible for that they had to take care of for me, so I feel indebted to them. Second, if I say I'm busy but they know that's not a work day for me, they might ask what I'll be doing and most of my family doesn't know about this channel or at least they don't know how important it is to me. So if I tell them the truth, I'm afraid they'll think I'm being selfish because filming and editing might seem like child's play to them. And I know it's not like they'll stop loving me if I refuse to do things, although I do have that trauma from my past. But the truth is that my family is very important to me, and I want to be able to show up for them. The problem is that I often show up for them more than for myself, and when I say no to them in order to say yes to myself, I often feel guilty and selfish. So I feel like they're not the censor, I am, you know, but I'm afraid they will judge me, but I'm the one judging myself. And third, I just suffer from the huge fault of not being able to say no to people in most occasions. 
It's not even just a family problem, it's the same at my job and basically with every person I come into contact with. I don't even know why I don't like being a people pleaser and I really want and need to change that because otherwise I'm gonna have an even harder time actually changing my life around. I feel like I just went on a big tangent there but I guess it's good to be aware of the challenges I'll be facing if I really want to change things, which I do. But let's move on to a more positive note. Let's talk about my vision for this week. It's supposed to be the last week with summer weather, at least for a while. On Thursday it's supposed to start raining and getting cold and I love that. I love the Portuguese summer, but only when I'm on holidays and can spend my time at the beach or by the river. Right now, I'm so ready for fall and winter. Actually, in the beginning of September, we had some proper fall days and I was woken up by the sound of rain multiple times. And I just remember the feeling of bliss when the rain wakes me up before my alarm clock does. So I can stay in bed and just listen to it against my window and it just gets me really excited for the day ahead, I don't know. <laughs> I know some people hate the cold weather and being inside, but I just love it. My reaction to the rain is basically the same as Winnie the Pooh's reaction to a fall leaf falling on his nose. I'll put up a clip here in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Longer when we gleam. <laughs> Hello, Christopher Robin. I can't seem to remember the. I do remember the. Uh... But then it just got hot again and I was busy anyway. So yeah, all of this to say that I feel like I thrive in the colder months and days for that matter. So the fact that it's gonna start getting colder soon has me really excited and it just feels like a sign to be honest. A sign that everything is falling into place. At the moment, I'm very much in the fall mood. I want candlelit mornings at my desk, writing in my notebook or typing away on my computer. And I want cozy evenings wrapped in a blanket on the couch, enjoying a good book with a hot spice drink. Can you feel the coziness? And speaking of books, so The Artist's Way is one thing I'll be consuming, but that's non-fiction. In terms of fiction, I'll be reading books that I already own, the ones on my TBR that are kind of false-scented, get it? False-scented? <laughs> are The Angel's Game, which is the second in the Shadow of the Wind series, The Graveyard Book, and I suspect also the theory of forgetfulness and the Twyford Code, but I'm not sure. I also have some books in mind to reread, namely Frankenstein, The Secret History and Harry Potter, but that will depend on what I decide to write for NaNoWriMo, because I like to read similar things to what I'm writing while I write a particular project. I'm also really tempted to buy new books to read because there are so many stories out there I have my eyes on, but I've decided to only do that once I've read these ones. 
because I don't want to have huge physical TBRs. I want to have read all of the books I own and to tailor my personal library to my taste. No shade to anyone who buys books as a hobby in itself. I love owning pretty books and I want a big home library in the future, but this is just what is sustainable for me right now and also what I envision for myself. I basically want to become my family and friends personal librarian and to be able to recommend every single book in my collection. So yeah, that's that. One of my sweet little dreams for the future. A TV series that I started watching recently and that I'm loving to relax with at the end of the day is Charmed, the 1998 original series. I haven't watched the reboot, but I might give it a try soon. I used to watch this series with my sister when we were kids and we loved it a lot, so it's nice to revisit the feeling we got from it. The vibes are super cozy and the plot of each episode is really easy to follow, which is nice because I can journal while the series is playing in the background, and that is currently my favorite way to watch it. When we were kids, me and my sister would always decide who was each character in whatever show or movie we watched together, and in Charmed, I feel like I'm definitely Piper. She's so soft and sweet, and I love how she's not hardened by the reality of her circumstances. Even though she loses some of her naivety across the series, I feel like she maintains that softness. At least so far she has, I'm still only on the first season and I don't remember much from what I watched in my childhood. I just like following her perspective the most. If you have any cozy fall TV shows you'd recommend, please let me know. At the moment, all I want at the end of the day is fall vibes and little more to be honest. I do have a lot of shows and books I'd like to talk to you about, but I'll guess I'll do that throughout the months of October and November. Or I might just make a whole video with the recommendations. Because I watch and read across multiple genres and age ranges, and I think that make it easier for you to find something you might like. Let me know if a fall media recommendations video is something you'd be interested in. I might try to fit it in the middle of the ideas I already have for the next videos I'll be working on. So here I'm using the Hobonichi Techo stamp, the interior version. I see it as a book and use it to track how many words I wrote in total by the end of the week. It's just another way to motivate myself and to keep an analog track of my work and progress. I just think it looks really nice. All right. So, this is what the spread looks like. I love the flying Weasley car for the sense of adventure. That sequence is probably my favorite Act 1 sequence from all of the Harry Potter movies. It's hard to tell though because I love so many bits from this series. I just... I'm a big fan of the movies. As well as the books, but yeah, this is from the movie. But I just thought this was the perfect representation of the instinct I want to follow throughout the week. And of course, we have a book because fiction. Then I have a cozy desk setup, which is not my own, but I really like this setup and it motivates me to write. And on the dailies page, we have a cozy drink and a lovely couple of cats for comfort. Because who doesn't love cats? Probably not anyone who watches my videos. <laughs> anyway, because this is the first video in this new series, I'm only setting up the upcoming week, but in my second video I'll be doing a weekly reflection where I'll tell you how this experiment is going before I set up the second week. This series is meant to be a check-in with me as well as a plan with me series. So, I hope you enjoyed this little time, I hope you'll stick around so we can make progress on our goals together, and I hope this motivated you to do whatever you dream of doing. Alright. I think I'm gonna end this entry with an affirmation, so I can send you and myself off on a good note. 
close your eyes and listen. You are ready for the next step. <laughs>